<coughs> hey hey and welcome to this newsletter of in the blocks this is a weekly newsletter for ethereum dab developer and if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter yet make sure to go over to the website of in the blocks and subscribe you put your email here and i will send you an email every week also i'd like to give you the result of the vote of last week so the winner is the walkthrough ethereum delta smart contract so that's the the video that i'm going to make this week and and then since uh you guys were seems quite happy with this new voting system that we're going to do it again so uh, this week i'm going to update the list of choices but this time i will put the choices in the description of the video and to vote like for last week you leave a comment and you tell me what is your vote and if you pick the winner then i will make this video for you the next week okay so this week there are quite a lot of interesting things and we'll start right away by the new tutorial that i released on um on the ethereum to do to do list series so this is the step nine here and so i've released the the post like like about a couple of weeks ago but this week i've just released the video on youtube and so in this step we're going to uh finish the, the to-do list series by uh, toggling each task with the done and undone status. And also we're going to learn how to keep the front end in sync with the smart contract. So this is a problem that is quite common in many dApp in that you change something on a smart contract and then the UI doesn't refresh automatically and the two become out of sync and it makes the user confused. So in this tutorial, I will teach you how to avoid that. And if you want to continue the series, then don't forget that um, the series actually doesn't end here. So the free series end here, but uh, the, the, there are still some episodes uh, if you buy the ebook. And in the next uh, uh, step, we will refactor everything with React. And after that, we'll refactor everything with Drizzle. And I should release uh, this updated uh, chapters next week on the ebook. Okay, uh, then uh, then we have a tutorial on how to use Mithril. So Mithril is a security analysis on Ethereum that is uh, quite popular. And what you can do with Mithril is make sure that your contract is secure. So this is a command line tool. So it's quite easy to use. Uh, it's quite complete. There are a lot of features, so it can be a little bit overwhelming for beginners. So in this tutorial, um, they show you how to how to make use of uh, of Mistreal on a very basic level. So it's good for people who never use uh, Mistreal. Uh, for example, you can detect things like a re-entrancy re attack um, or like a very common kind of, of bug, or also bug where people can withdraw Ether from the smart contract without having uh, put anything in the smart contract, which usually signal that there is a problem. So basically, you should never release any smart contract without running one of these tools, like Mistreal or others. Next. Mm. There is a tutorial of uh, crypto zombies on the ERC 721X tutorial. So ERC 721, you probably know what it is. This is a non-fungible token standard that is used in uh, crypto kitties and all these collectible games. And Loom Network, so who does the who does a scaling solution on layer two, uh, so they do sidechain for for DApps. Uh, they are uh, big on games and recently they had a problem where on one of their sidechain they had to transfer a lot of, uh, of, of NFT, of like ERC721 uh, NFT. And in terms of gas, they realized that if they, if they had done it just with ERC721, it would have cost them a lot of, of gas. It would have cost them way too much. So they started to work on a new standard to solve this problem and ERC721X is the result of their research and in this uh, crypto zombies tutorial they teach you uh, how to use it so that's really cool especially if you are into games they finally check this out uh, then 
there is an article about what is the transparent proxy pattern on the Zemplin OS blog. So you might have heard of what is the proxy pattern. So proxy pattern is a way of deploying your smart contract with a sort of intermediary smart contract that allow um, uh, end user to, to update uh, the, the the actual implementation of a contract. So that's, that's basically the way we implement upgradability on Ethereum with the proxy pattern. And by the way, I'll probably do a tutorial soon about this because uh, I've been asked to, to do it. So yeah, um, so what I want to say about the transparent uh, proxy pattern is that um, so the, the problem with the, the, the proxy pattern in general is that if um, the, sometimes there can be some confusion on which function a user want to call. So example, in general proxy contract, they have a function which is called upgrade to. And, uh, but if the contract that actually contain the logic also have the same function with the same name, then when the proxy contract receive a, a transaction with the user uh, wanted to call, uh, the, the function update to, we don't know for sure if the user wants to execute the function on the proxy or uh, want to execute the function on the, the logic contract. So uh, this is a problem and this article will explain you how you can avoid that. Then there is a new framework uh, for developing and testing smart contract called uh, Mido. And this is a framework on uh, .NET, so, um, so you can use a C Sharp for, for this framework. And so you can see it as basically a sort of equivalent of Truffle on .NET. So if you're a Windows.NET kind of guy, they finally check this out. Uh, it's interesting to notice, like the past few weeks, uh, we've seen more and more tools for .NET, which is not the primary target of Ethereum originally, but I think one reason that can explain that is the fact that game developers are, um, are start to develop more and more games on Ethereum, and especially with the development of the Loom network, there is a big influx of, of game developers. And uh, generally, uh, game developers, they are on Windows because most game users, they are also on Windows. And so, so that explains a demand uh, in tools in, in .NET, C Sharp, etc. Uh, then there is a new release of Truffle, so Truffle 5.0.0 beta 2. And this is interesting because in this release, uh, they've, um, they've updated Solidity to the latest version, so 0 0.5.0, so which allows to use all sort of, um, of new, new cool feature of Solidity. And they've also released a new command that's called truffle run. Um, and I think a lot of people, I mean, yeah, I've kind of ignored this, but it's actually quite a big deal because uh, what you can do with this command is you can develop plugins. So they actually, they have a tutorial on how you can do this. And I might also do a tutorial on this if people are interested. Um, so yeah, um, this is, uh, I think, once we start to have like plugging being developed on on Truffle, it will really make the whole uh, uh, ecosystem of Truffle way more way more valuable. So maybe that that's just a very important release. And then there in this release, there is an integration with the Viper compiler. So Viper is this uh, alternative programming language for smart contract. Um, so it's quite cool because it makes Truffle more universal. Because so far, universal. Uh, Truffle has been tied to only Solidity, but now Truffle will be more general. And finally, they've upgraded Web3 to the latest uh, uh, version. And in this latest version, Web3 enables struct parameters. And this is also a, a big deal because so far, although we can represent data on smart contract with struct, we can't uh, we can return uh, a struct to um, to outside uh, entity like what the front end of your DAP cannot uh, with Web3 cannot just query struct. So we we had to resort to all sort of tricks like um, like like splitting the struct into into a tuple of different uh, elementary solidity type, for example, 
and then on the front end you will rebuild this and repackage it into an object but that's that's quite clunky um, so if we don't have to do this anymore that's great so I really look forward to, to this release and okay now next I picked an article on a, on a new framework called Web3 React and that's basically a front-end framework for dApps where you can use a new feature of React called Hooks. So that's not a stable feature uh, that's still in, in beta, so it's not even sure that it will stay in React. But if you feel adventurous, then you might want to check out this framework. And, and so, for example, using that component, you can access um, like a, an instantiated uh, instance of Web3. Uh, you, can, you can get information about your, your contract and all sort of nice thing. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a thin layer uh, that you can use in, in your DAP frontend if you use React. Then there is uh, the release of Light, Light.js. So if you remember the last newsletter, I mentioned that Parity uh, was releasing a Light client for Ethereum. So Light clients are important because they will allow um, some, uh, some devices with not a lot of processing power, such as uh, mobile devices, they will allow these devices to actually uh, uh, verify their the tr own transaction without relying on, uh, on public nodes like Infura. So that's very important for decentralization and DAP usability. And, and so this week they've released a, a, a client library for, for those new uh, Ethereum Lite clients. Um, and so basically how it would work. So in this tutorial, they explain you everything, but the gist of it is uh, what you will have in your DAP frontend, you will have two things. One, you will have a, a light client, so the, the light client of parity, and then your DAP will use uh, light.js, and with light.js, you will communicate with your, your light, light Ethereum client. And so basically light.js uh, will sort of replace Web3. Uh, and it w it's, not, it's not very different for Web3, so it's quite easy to, uh, to, to, to learn it. And in this tutorial, like, they, they give you an example. I say, okay, before with Web3, is, this is the code, and now with Light.js, this is the equivalent. Um, they seem to use reactive programming a lot, so if you're familiar with the framework called Rx, it's a JavaScript framework, uh, you will feel uh, at ease. But it's basically, it's a modern way of programming, so I like it. And then there is a very cool project that is called One Click Dap. So when you go to their website, it can take a while to load, so don't be surprised. But basically, the idea of One Click Dap is that you, if you want to do, a, if you want to make a DAP, all you have to do is to create a smart contract. You don't have to create the, the front end. Then you compile it and you take the ABI and you upload the ABI to their website. And based on your ABI, they're going to dynamically create all the, the UI. So for example, if they see that uh, in your ABI, you have a function that uh, is expecting an input, uh, I don't know, uh, like a string, then they're going to create like an input box of, uh, of type text. Uh, uh, if, if a function returns like a tuple of three parameters, then the, the UI will know how to display this parameter, etc., etc. So uh, like if you, if you use the Remix, this already exists in Remix. Remix knows how to dynamically create all, the, all this UI for you. Uh, but Remix is for developers, but one click tab uh, will allow you to, to have a auto-generated UI directly for, for your user. So that might not be usable for people who uh, actually want to monetize their DAP and do something uh, really uh, uh, quite advanced with it. But it might be interesting for people who just want to uh, test something or as a, as a playground. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm expecting this project to be very popular. You might, you might hear about it a lot in the next few weeks. And then finally, uh, actually, I think this is one of the most interesting thing I find this week. It's a project called Eventum. So if you've been 
in the DAP ecosystem for a while, you are probably aware that there is one thing which is difficult with Ethereum nodes, it's listening to events. So basically you can't just use a public node like Infura and listen to the event of your own contract. Because first you need to configure your Ethereum node to listen to, to the events of your specific contract. And you can't do this with public nodes like Infra. So if you want to listen to your own events, then that forces you to operate your own Ethereum node. And as you know, uh, now the blockchain got really huge. I think now we need at least one terabyte of, uh, of storage. Uh, so that's quite expensive if you if you take a, if you buy an EC2 like like for example an, an AWS EC2 instance strong enough for this it will it will cost you a lot uh, so that's uh, that's a problem and so there are a couple of services that popped up that allow developer to uh, listen to to uh, any any events on on the Ethereum blockchain but those are pet services. But with this project, what they did was a library to do the same thing. So they have a Docker image and also a Docker Compose configuration because there are different parts in the project. And so one part of it is a parity node. Another part of it is either uh, Kafka or, or uh, RabbitMQ, which has two very famous uh, queue solutions, uh, very ro robust. And so what you will do with this is it will it will allow you to um, to register to event with their CLI and and then your front end will listen to these events and you can do all sort of, of things like uh, notification when a transaction might uh, when a, when something happened on the smart contract uh, like but all of this will be done very very easily it's, it's like a turnkey solution it will just work out of the box. So there is just one word of caution. Uh, this is a new project, so it's probably not stable yet, but you might want to try it out uh, just uh, in your development environment. And, and if you're happy with it and you don't notice any bug, then you can, you can use it in production also. Um, yeah, uh, I think we're almost done with this newsletter. Uh, yeah, I think that was the last thing that I wanted to tell you, but since I already picked my 10 links, then I didn't put it in a, in a newsletter, but I'm just going to uh, briefly mention it. So there is a controversy now with uh, Ethereum development. So during DEF CON 4 that took place a couple of weeks ago, there were a couple of uh, private discussion between Ethereum core developers, um, like in, I mean, I mean, a private discussion about the, the future of, uh, of Ethereum. And some people got angry about it because in general, in Ethereum, all the discussion uh, need to be uh, public. But the point of this private discussion was to speed things up and, and, um, and take decision to, to increase the speed of the, of the new features in Ethereum. Because you've probably noticed that the pace of development is, is quite slow. Um, so yeah, there is like a sort of, um, of, of drama brewing in, in the Ethereum community because of this. And I really hope it will resolve soon because this is not super uh, interesting. Like if you listen to the latest uh, notes of the, of the core developer uh, meeting, then I think half of it is, is about this drama. And I think it really sucks. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is a shame uh, that that it was it was private meetings, but maybe they, they had their, their their reasons and and anyway like let's just be let's just be more positive, uh, and and also I think this highlight a, a problem in the decentralization model of Ethereum. So decentralization is great, but really we have to admit that it also makes decision taking much more difficult, and it ma it makes progress much slower. And because nobody is the boss, so nobody feels really they have some sort of actual uh, responsibility. And yeah, I think that's interesting because that really highlights one of the limits of decentralization. So I don't have an answer to this, but I just want to, to, mention, uh, to mention this because in Ethereum, we talk a lot about decentralization as being the solution for everything. It's not so simple.
Thank you for following this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you want to see more video like this, make sure you subscribe and you can also share it to, the, to your friend. And, um, and I hope to see you for my next video. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.